If you like to get into permaculture, it offers lots of ideas. Also doing a permaculture design certificate, I would recommend to anyone out there. It really gives you is a it, good, good... Is it possible to, to um, maybe visit you for in, in the holidays for one or two weeks, stay here and uh, um, maybe volunteer the project? Yes, so we, we offer volunteering here, um, but we also offer permaculture introductions, which... As, a, co be, as a course? Or? Well, we don't offer the certificate yet. For that, there are older projects with more experienced teachers out there. But we do offer a first introduction into permaculture. Okay. And what's nice about this project is that we really have hands-on experience. So if you come here, we don't have huge groups and it's not only theory, but you come here and you really can put your hands into the dirt. You see how it works, how you build up a project like this. And I really enjoy yeah, talking about it, teaching to people. And the volunteer work is yeah, a 100% success for us. So another thing I would mention here I'm not sure if all people doing a forest garden do that, but I like to take in the borders into the center because the borders here are with native plants growing spontaneously. And I don't like bringing too much stuff in here that hasn't been here. So if, for example, I see a nice nut tree, a hazelnut, and I have a nice spot in the forest garden to put it, I take it from the edges, put it to the space in the forest garden where I want it, and yeah. You have That's natural good. stuff growing. So you have uh, uh, natural nuts and plums and whatever? Yeah, exactly. Plums are very... You can see some here. Those are the, the wild plums. And they're very dominant here. So when I came to this place, they were growing really everywhere. Okay. And that's because they have a great root network everywhere. And they support each other like all trees. And yeah, so I left some of them here. I try to prune them a bit so they don't get into the way of the rest I'm planting yes. and just use them to prepare. So also for chop and drop, also for shading, also for yeah, having the root structure in the soil and supporting yeah. the whole system. Yeah, really cool. Um, talking about chop and drop is good. Did you put trees to chop? Maybe willows or yeah. other in, inside the system? I tried with willows, but two years ago and we had a very dry summer and nearly all of them died. Okay, so they need they need it they need moisture. They right? need moisture, yeah. A lot. So a lot. Yeah, what I'm using now mainly is the grass I cut here. Yes. Which is also a kind of chop and drop I guess. And the yeah trees I just have here. Lots of the the wild plums and but you have the grass inside the system and the, the trees on the borders and yeah. so inside that's, the system. Yeah, that's the setup so the, so the system far. feeds themselves or you put anything um, organic matter from the outside? Um, this year for the first time I tried putting some little compost to the center of the okay. fruit trees to give them a little boost. Ah yeah, you mentioned it. Yes. Yeah, and also we put some effective microorganism um, on the on the trunks, okay. which in my opinion also gave a very nice the, little. You boost. you bought them? Or we bought them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's really really nice. Yeah, I like to imagine the, how the, it will be in a few years. Yes, with the shade. It feels so nice to have the shade, and already the small trees. It's amazing. Like they they already cool on a hot yes. day. Is um, did you put the food forest in lines or, may, or, or areas or completely wild? I, um, um, well, I think uh, down, down there were some lines. Yeah, so, so the idea in the end will be to have some mini terraces here. Ah, okay. But since I do it in this food forest, I do it manually with a, with a spade. It, yeah. it takes its time. So this year I just did one terrace. Next year I'll do one or two more and then step by step. And in the other forest garden, you'll see later, I have a different concept. There I am building barriers to stop the flow of biomass and thereby creating a natural terrace in time. It's kind of what I'm doing here as well. So I'm just putting, yeah, twigs there and then I'll put some, some hay and more biomass and then by time it will build up. The, con the concept of the food forest also has the, the soil is covered all year. Exactly. <clears throat> also in our um, vegetable gardens. That's the thing we follow, so it's no dig and we try to always keep it covered just to keep the moisture in the soil and to protect it from the sunlight. It's, yeah, it's super effective. You yeah, water and, less. And build organic matter in the time. That as well, yeah. yeah. That's a nice tree. This one I want to cut actually. It doesn't produce any nuts since years already. Okay. 
but Johanna's mother is not yet convinced I'm allowed to cut, but it needs more light for sure. Cut a base four meters above and it will bring some light and... Yeah, I'm even thinking I'm no, about I'm cutting no, it, I'm like no. cutting lots of the big ones, because there's lots of new growth down there that okay. looks pretty healthy. But I'm still not sure how to do it. So with the younger trees, I did some courses how to, how to prune them, but with old ones, I think it's more complicated. Because yes. you don't want to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, maybe look on the channel from Baumschule Schreiber in Austria. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's a video about cutting old trees. All right, that's and interesting. That yeah, I'm are... still learning every day here. <laughs> in the internet, but also on the land. That's yes. one of the super interesting aspects of being, being on the spot. Every day you make mistakes, every day you learn, and it's super interesting. I love it. I see here a lot of potential for chop and drop. Yes, that's May right. This is an invasive species. Can you tell me about it some, something? Yeah, it's a Rubinia pseudoacacia. So it's mistaken for the acacia tree, it's not. Um, it's a hardwood tree, but it grows very quickly. The people here don't like it because, as you said, it is invasive and it also has these very potent roots that go everywhere, connect with each other and bring small shoots out everywhere. Okay, there's a... Uh, so, um, to understand it right, um, there's a mother tree and they get roots under the ground yeah, and then yeah. it's come another tree coming Exactly, out. so as soon as you have one bigger tree in the middle of your property, you'll soon have lots of kids around it. But the wood is really good, maybe you can use it for... Yeah, I use good. it a lot. So it's actually one of my favorite trees. I've got a favorite plant and a favorite tree. My favorite plant is the nettle and my favorite tree is this. So I use it for firewood, it's hardwood so it gives lots of heat. Um, I use it for natural construction. It's super, what do you say, it, it doesn't go bad. Even if you put it in the ground, it can deal with humidity, with, with water in the ground. And then for the bees, this place here is also a paradise because we have got lots of the Rubinias here. Yes. And the beekeepers travel from far away here in the time when the blossom of the Rubinia is because all the place here is covered in, in white flowers. It smells amazing, it looks amazing, and the bees love it and make the, the best honey ever. It's really cool. Yeah. And so you can use the Robinia as a, a nitrogen elevator. Maybe the nitrogens are on the ground, go in the Robinia and you cut it and put it in the system? That's the problem. It, it, it grows very quickly if you have fresh wood cut down. And okay. also it has the spikes. So I like to go barefoot and I also have lots of guests who like to go barefoot. Okay. So it's not, not the best thing everywhere. But on, on the edges, for example, I put lots of it, yeah. So important here to always close the gates. Once you enter and leave the property again, we've got lots of interesting wildlife here, which is yeah less interesting for the livestock. So we have shackles here, bears, and they do sometimes attack the livestock. So okay. We try to keep everything closed. And if you look here to this row of trees, that's something my wife's grandfather already left growing, which I am so thankful for, because this is the weather side from here. And these trees block the strong winds, give shade. They're yeah, super. So, so you've got already a microclimate in this area. Huh? Yes, we do. We do. Because I uh, see on the, on the other side, there are also a hedge. The, the hedge on the other side I start. Let's uh, look at this biodiversity. Can you see them? Ants. Super interesting animals. Yeah, observing nature. So let's hurry, you are in the ants. So here you see what I, what I said about the Rubinias sending out you, the roots. You have to cut every year. To yeah, yeah, not, not only every year. I think this year I'll have to cut twice here due to the rainfall. So this was cut about a month ago. Th this? This came, this is growth of one month. It, one month? Yeah. It has a lot of potential in a, in a uh, agroforest system. Yeah. But you have to take control, abo control about it. Yeah, and I did something the people here in the village would say is a mistake. So this tree I left two years ago, and you see how big it is, and this tree one year ago. Yes. So it's an incredible growth. And thanks to those trees now, I'm getting the, the babies everywhere. But uh, you have some shade for the, for the greenhouse? It, al it, it already gives lots of shade, yeah. Okay. I'm still not certain if I will really let them grow into the food forest up there. I'm still kind of experimenting here. Yes. Yeah. I think as long as they don't disturb the, the main trees, the, the fruit-bearing trees, 
it's it's okay and the rest on the ways I can cut them <laughs> and at some point anyway there will be enough shade from the fruit trees so they won't yeah that's a swale here <laughs> yes so here I try to capture the the water so and you made this t terrace yeah that's the most most current earthworks we did so we created a new terrace here and also a pond back there yes and it's the second round of earthworks. The, the first round was shortly after I did the design plan for the property. And it was leveling the ground down here and putting in the first pond, as well as yeah. the, the permaculture garden down there. There's always something happening. So here we're installing a new water tank for the greenhouse we installed last year. So that's also a tricky thing. I don't know if you tried before, but we're trying to capture the water from this tunnel. Okay. And it's not too easy to fix drainage pipe there and also to get the water into everything. But you managed it, I see. I managed, yeah. It was a fight. And there are tomatoes inside? Yes, we can take a short look inside there. A bit better developed already. On the right side, they got too much sun. So ah, I've okay. got one shading net up there and it helped the ones on the left side a lot. So they nearly reached the ceiling and are producing now. The ones on the right side were kind of burned by the sun, so more shading for next year. That's the learning. And that's really cool here. What are these? These Be are beans. 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 Yeah, I call them galaxy beans because they're super colorful <laughs> and look like the galaxy. Maybe we can open one up and see, but I'm not sure how ready they are. They might be too young. Oh, okay. Really cool. Yeah, they are nice, but sometimes they also are in purple and orange. So yeah, that's one of the many shades it gets. But Re they're really cool. Yeah, and we keep them for winter, so that's one of our winter provisions we take. Very easy, just dry them, put them in a, in a can, and you've got some delicious beans for the winter. When uh, you, did you start this project? So we laid the foundation to the project in 2017, and by that I mean literally we like made the foundation of our house down there. Okay. And from then on everything developed step by step, so... Yeah, I started gardening here. I never was into gardening or farming before. And I implemented some concepts from permaculture without knowing anything about it. Okay, learning by doing, yeah? Yeah, yeah, very practical yeah, all cool. the time. And yeah, it's actually here where I got, got rooted to, to earth and, and nature. And it's a nice experience. And, and, and what did you before? I was working on, on ships. So on in ships. the merchant, merchant navy, on container ships later. Okay in rescue operations and then in, um, in a sailing cargo vessel, Aventure, which is a great project, Timber Coast. They're very inspiring sounds people. Sounds really interesting. And yeah. why do you come here? I came here because I met Joanna, okay. my, my wife. And then after a year, we came to this place and she showed me the place she, yeah, for her it was always the place of the grandparents and yeah, being during the summer holidays. Okay. And she, since her childhood, she has this deep connection to this place, to nature here, but also to the local culture. And the inspiration somehow came, came over to me. And yeah. Sounds really cool. And since so then, you decided uh, one and a half or two years after you met to do the, um, the... Yes. To live here and make this project. Yeah, we didn't decide right away. So the first years, actually, we were still working in Germany, living in Germany and only being here for the summer and okay. setting everything up. It's just since our daughter started school that we 100% and definitely ah, okay. focused, focused on Romania. It's a good decision because something like this you can't do like half-heartedly. Either you do it 100% or you don't do it. You have to put all your passion into it. Yeah, and so th this is the area you started with, with the project? Yes. We, we, I started with a bit of gardening and in the beginning it was mostly just maintaining the, yeah, the wilderness here because when okay. we arrived it was bushes, huge grass growing over my head. So the first step was just getting to know the land and making space for something to grow and to develop. And then after I did my permaculture design certificate I made a design concept for this space and okay. started to consciously design it. Well, I knew about some permaculture concepts before, but the real structured view on anything I got with the certificate, yeah. yeah and really that's cool. also why I recommend it, because before I made a lot more mistakes than I'm doing now. I'm still doing them. Yeah, and then after doing the big design for the project, I put it into practice. So in the design, it was a lot about water 
and how to manage the water, how to have reserves for dry periods. On paper you made a plan and... Yeah, yeah. Very, very simple, like a child making a drawing, so yeah, nothing cool. complicated on the computer, just, just for, for having something and to, do, to, to know what to do in practice. Yeah, that's what we did. We did a swale up here to capture the water. Which um, it's, it's this. Yeah, you this see area. you see the grass line where I left the grass growing. That's that's where the a pond. Yeah, a pond. Here yeah. I installed a pond, which is oh, there's a, a dragonfly flying. Maybe we can capture it. Yeah, I see it. So that's one of the things that this pond attracts biodiversity to its fullest. We have some cute frogs here singing for us every evening. Um, how old is this pond? This pond is three years old and we didn't use any plastics or linings inside. We okay. just, we've got a very clay soil and so we just hardened the clay there. I did one more tour of, yeah, solidifying it two years ago, I think. And since then it, it holds. We had a very dry summer two years ago and there it was near to yeah, running dry. The water is coming from above and goes into the pond? Yes, also from the swale. So the swale is meant to bring water into the ground. Okay. But if there's too much rainfall, the surplus also flows into, into the lake. Another reason why I didn't put any lining inside is that the water, if it goes out of the pond, it filters through the earth here and feeds the plants we have. So yes. why, why should I stop that? Only thing here that's missing is shading. So it, there, there are some willows? Yeah, some, some willows survived here. <laughs> okay, 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 you planted them. And yeah. there's a nut tree, so you... Yeah. And I think Sylvia? Um, yes, I've got some Sylvia over there. So it's a perennial, it grows very high, it attracts pollinators, it's, it's beautiful on a sunny day. The, yeah, all kinds of bees love it. And you've got, a, an, again, you've got a, a lots of biodiversity. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing. cool. That's what we need in the future. Yeah. No monoculture. Some of it installed, but most of it just by the nature here. Here in this valley, nature really helps us. <laughs> Often it's the cheapest way to do, to do nothing and let the nature work. Perennial garden, I think? Yes, exactly. It's currently Let's... undergoing a, a transformation. And it, this is, these are beds with... Therobinia outside, okay. so it has a snowflake shape if you look from the top. And for doing the contours of the snowflake, I used the trees growing around here. 